right. Well, welcome back to the High on God podcast with Matt Spinks and Zach Pratt. <laughs> we are beginning a new series on uh, drinking from the mystics of old, uh, mm. drinking from the saints. And uh, so we're excited. We're going to go into a few uh, a few episodes of, uh, of just diving into different saints of the past. And so, yeah, tune in if that's interesting to you. Um, we're going to be uh, just... Uh, gathering nuggets from their lives and uh, and seeing what Jesus has uh, in the midst of their life for us today to drink from. Uh, what were they getting high on that's still good, that's still fresh? <laughs> but uh, first, we usually start with a recommendation for a book and some music for your intoxicating pleasure. And so Zach's going to recommend some music for you. Yeah, so um, we've been listening to... Uh this song almost on repeat (laughs) from I mean really the album's not out yet so we just wanted to give you guys a a heads up Uh, Warren Sylvester is coming out with a new album shout out uh, to Warren yeah we don't exactly know what the track is going to be called Um, Salvation is You maybe yeah something like that but uh, just really really good song Uh, I won't spoil it too much yeah, it's, it's so good. <laughs> and his last album, Get In This Cloud, has some great tracks as well. So shout out to you, Warren, if you're watching. Uh, but highly recommend you guys get his stuff. Absolutely. Uh, another uh, great resource, which kind of connects to what we're talking about this week. Um, we want to recommend the book, The Way of the Heart by Henry Nouwen. Um, Henry Nouwen was a, just an awesome kind of father in the faith um, in the more recent years. You know, and he had, he preached and wrote extensively on the beloved, um, just a beautiful heart. He's a priest. He wrote, um, well, this book, The Way of the Heart, that goes into some of the desert contemplatives and uh, kind of relates with our episode today. So we encourage you to check that out and uh, the other resources of Henry Nouwen. Mm-hmm. But uh, so, yeah, it connects with today. We wanted to look into St. Anthony, um, St. Anthony of Egypt, St. Anthony of the Desert, uh, a lot of glory on this guy. Uh, <laughs> one of the oldest mystics. So we're kind of going all the way back to you know um, some of the you know the earliest uh, years of the church. Anyway, uh, one of the oldest Christian mystics post Jesus, post Paul, um, known as the father of monasticism, one of the first monks, and uh, yeah, just one of the um, one of the the foremost and earliest mystics that gets a lot of cred in different places, um, in the body of Christ. So we wanted to, uh, first of all, just kind of, you know, open our hearts up to say, Jesus, what do you have for us from the life of St. Anthony? What Mm -hmm. can we drink from? Um, we recognize that cloud of witnesses around us, that Anthony is still alive in Christ, that all these saints of the ages are still alive in Christ. And we just welcome the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We welcome the angels. We welcome the cloud of witnesses and uh, we just welcome you, Holy Spirit, to open our hearts to mm. to the things from the life of Anthony today. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, and uh, with most of these, there's going to be kind of this tension between how did they yeah. perceive what they were experiencing? Uh, what what lessons did people who followed them or their contemporaries think that they were gleaning from their lives, um, or what what even what theological changes were made? based on those experiences yeah. uh, versus, um, you know, maybe what what through the eyes of the gospel or through the incarnation, through Jesus, you know, viewing viewing their lives through that lens, what, what can we glean? And um, Come on. so we're going to try to hold those things in tension and see what each other thinks about these different things. Um, and St. Anthony, Abba Anthony is no different than, uh, than any of these saints who, who had sort of a, a mixture of, of <laughs> yeah. I, uh, pot, potential uh, takeaways from their life. Um, there was uh, more specifically, there was a there was a huge emphasis on on discipline, uh, on on the virtues of asceticism, yeah. um, and uh, there was also a lot of, of miracles. There was also a lot of um, healings and um, people glory. getting free from demons and even teleportation and things like that. So we kind of want to get into those things a little bit more too. Um, so like, uh, Matt, what, what are your thoughts on the whole like aspect of, of the, this 
the the uh, the drawing away, the solitary aspect of of um, of Saint Anthony in particular, particular, or the the virtues of that. Mm. Yeah, that's good. You know, uh, just before I answer that, I just I feel like you know since we're starting this new series, it's it's interesting because we are going to discuss like like uh, the the pros and cons, the pluses and minuses, things that we uh, really want to gain, and also things that you want to avoid. And part of that, when you're discussing, you know, such ancient uh, figures and such well-respected figures, you can kind of say like, well, who are you, you know, to be like evaluating these individuals? And uh, first of all, we're not judging them because, uh, you know, we all live in our in our particular culture and life and times and, and era of revelation and such. So we just want to, uh, you know, glean what we can. But you always do eat the meat and spit out the bones. And uh, but I'll just say like, as we begin to discuss Anthony's life and these various mystics, um, that I'm just thankful that I believe we are in the greatest day of revelation ever. Um, that though there's a lot of like confusion around the world in, in the body of Christ, even, and very few seem to be drinking just the pure, like good news of heaven on earth and, and Jesus's finished work. Uh, I still believe that there's a, uh, an element of widespread revelation and we have, um, like, so many books and so many, um, you know, people to draw from that we can, uh, you know, glean so many things that even a thousand years ago, they didn't have access to even these kind of conversations. I mean, look, we're having conversations over the internet. We're having conversations, um, pulling from so many various backgrounds and stuff. So I'm just excited to be alive today. And, uh, and so as we do this series, uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't ever want to come across as like, oh, we're the guys that got all these saints figured out. We've got the corner on them all. We know more than Anthony of the desert, <laughs> Abba Anthony or anything, you know, but at the same time, you know, um, yeah, we, we have, you know, since, since Anthony's day, we have the blessing of the reformation, uh, re return to salvation by grace alone. Um, we have the blessing of the Bible being accessible to the everyday man. We have, uh, you know, the blessing of the increase of his government and his peace on the earth, you know. And so um, that's just a little backdrop before we dive in. Now, I love the question that you started out with there, Zach, because uh, so we'll just go through a few, you know, of Anthony's, uh, you know, what he was known for and just kind of discuss that so that we may drink in solitude is definitely one of the ones that Anthony was, uh, known was for really. It. Yeah. He was, yeah. he was deep in, you know, um, it was like the first 20 years of his adult life. He just withdrew into the desert of Egypt, um, or nearby Egypt. And, uh, and he was completely in solitude. A lot of times, uh, absolutely alone for years at a time or just barely, you know, going to get the supplies that he needed and, and, uh, withdrawing away. And, um, and so that's where, you know, in that time, uh, in the, in the world of Christianity, uh, he was one of the first monks, you know, there wasn't really, um, a, a drawing away in that, in that time period. There wasn't, um, you know, uh, throughout different periods of church history, monasticism became really huge and there's still monks and nuns to this day that, that live that kind of lifestyle. And so, you know, just, just contemplating like why did he do that and what benefit is there to that you know you can kind of relate it to any time period where culture begins to be so kind of pervasive and so you know there's there's so many systems of greed there's so many uh normal normalizations of uh just you know unhealth you know uh normalizations of of oppression or just society yeah. living like toxicity less than, you know? almost yeah and yeah. so um, I think, you know, uh, good for Anthony, I, w I would say, and I think, you know, something we can learn from is that, you know, he was not content to just be absorbed with the culture of his day. He was not content to just be, um, you know, uh, he, he knew, and I, I think like, like all Christians, like there's, there's a time in our life where you need to come to this place where you, uh, you know, it's like the, the old, you know, airplane and the and oxygen mask analogy, like until you put your own oxygen mask on, you can't, it's, you know, you don't put the oxygen mask of the person next to you because you, you, in your process of trying to help them, you die and then you both die and then everybody dies. <laughs> That's a little morbid, but, um, <laughs> you know, you oftentimes 
when you're so absorbed with the culture and you even think like, well, I can be a blessing to all these people around me. Um, and that's my first priority. You lose track of the, of the fact that, uh, you know, you've got to breathe for yourself. You know, you've got to, um, be walking in the yeah. Holy, Holy ghost yourself. And right. so I think there's something amazing about the fact that he saw that. And around that time period, he was like, uh, an inspiration to others of like this pulling away this life of, um, just, you know, he, he understood that all of our virtue is drawn from this communion with the Lord. And so he wanted to take time for that first and foremost. So I think that's, you know, one of the awesome aspects of Anthony and one of the things he's especially known for. Right, um, right. Yeah, I mean, it seems like, yeah, I liked what you were saying about the oxygen mask. I've been using that a lot lately with my kids yeah, yeah exactly dude <laughs> or when explaining and explaining it to other people like just some choices that i make or whatever yeah i mean it's like you know not to make it not to draw too much away from like the the talking about anthony but it's like you know there's that there's that there is so, like some sort of a truth to the the idea that if if you think that it's all about focusing on helping other people around you or maybe you just have a lean in that direction you're just kind of bent that way where you just like helping people yeah which is beautiful right? yeah it can quickly become like not a restful thing yes. um, just like it kind of slides into a it kind of slides into a thing that you're not doing out of rest or you're not doing out of inspiration anymore and so there's there's a lot of glory a lot of um <laughs> there's a lot to be gleaned from this yes. deeper reality about how we are in a place of solitude inside ourselves um, and it, it, we always have access to that place of solitude or or even you know being able to manifest that externally as a part of our, our rhythms or as a part of our rhythm somehow I noticed that you know it, it when I'm during the work week if I'm having more like car time and stuff that that ends up being sort of just my my place to to be reminded place. about these things, these truths about reminded about Christ and me and to, to drink, yes. you know? And so, um, I think there's an, a really big importance to that. Um, and I, and I think it's also important to emphasize that, you know, you're not a slave to your situation. You know, you're not a, you don't have to go out and find solitude. Um, you, you don't, you know, you're not stuck, but, uh, there's always that place in Jesus inside of you. Um, Yes, so there's the a, there's a beauty, of the heart, huh? yeah, and there's this there's this beauty to how he withdrew from society because, you know, it's like hitting that reset switch. I don't know. Well, and you, and you find like, um, you know, it, it's it's hilarious. Like, you know, uh, as you get older, sometimes you you see uh, there's often extremes on both ends of different things. And I'm not a, an advocate for balance, still, to be honest with you, but <laughs> I am an advocate from learning from the pitfalls of, of previous, even mistakes that I've made and, and, you know, others, uh, yeah. like there's this thing where you can sometimes say, well, you know, I've always got the solitude in my heart of Jesus, but that becomes like, you never actually take any, uh, any <laughs> physical solitude. And right, so right, right. You, it just becomes words only and you're not really communing in that. But then yeah. there's a pitfall on the other side of like always thinking that you do need to pull away. And then in fact, like, um, never being able to like live a full life because you're always kind of feeling like you need to get to the secret place, get to the secret place. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And so, good. uh, only Holy spirit can really show us in what this time period in, in every season of our life, like which, you know, is, is healthy for us. And you, yeah. that's the amazing thing of uh, being filled with the spirit, um, is that we have, you know, God leading us in moment to moment in real relationship rather than just trying to figure out these principles. Um, <laughs> but I think with Anthony, there's definitely this impartation off of his life that we can just like, you know, drink from, of of understanding uh he was a man that was not going to go with the just be absorbed with the culture of his day he was not going to be satisfied with a life less than burnt like a burning flame in the desert you know and so it's cool mm -hmm. you know you just studying his history he pulled away he lived in the desert for decades and then when he came out of solitude for a bit like people were just naturally drawn to him they said like yeah. just kind of the brightness of his presence yeah. like the uh just this uh, you know, he was really a burning and shining like lamp of glory. 
because he'd been communing with the father and made that his first priority. Yeah. Um, another thing is like he sold all that he had. There was a time in his life where he felt that call, you know, so he, um, he really, uh, just, you know, was bro broke free from, from, uh, greed and, and, uh, and just looking to material things to satisfy him. Now it's almost like with all of these, we're kind of discussing, um, the tenets of like asceticism, you know, um, they, you know, an ascetic, uh, was often like, uh, you know, many of the monks of the past got, you know, caught up into uh, like this almost negative thing where they were always fasting. They were always, they, they never wanted to own anything. They always wanted to be, you know, getting enough time in prayer, enough time away. And it ends up, you know, putting you back on this religious like thing, which was kind of the danger of that. Um, but at the same time, like there is a beauty in the dedication and devotion to that. Like while we're, you know, uh, preaching, um, in this, you know, whack and grace reformation, we're, we're preaching that your efforts are not necessary, that you're not going to gain a single thing by doing a single thing. Um, at the same time, we're not downplaying playing the value of devotion. You know, mm -hmm. we're not, we don't want to ever downplay the value of like being disconnected from greed, you know, being disconnected from uh, busyness and the anxieties that the world often face because they're not actually communing with Abba Jesus and Holy Spirit. And so, yeah, Anthony provides us a, a beautiful uh, opportunity to converse around this in, in our own heart with the Lord. Um, because he did, you know, um, you know, he walked in such a, a glory. He did. Uh, there were so many miracles um, like that. He would, uh, you know, you were you were. Did you have any miracle stories of his that you remember? I'm trying to remember yeah. some of them. <laughs> There's yeah. a couple that stuck in my memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one you of them was that. they they brought this demon possessed man to him, and normally he was in total isolation, and they would just lower bread from the ceiling to him like once every few months, even like he was eating hardly anything. But they brought this demon possessed guy to him, and uh, he he stayed up with him all night long, and then near the end. The, the guy like kicked him in the face and uh, the followers were there for some reason and they saw this happen and like, they kind of scrambled to pull this guy away and kind of throw him back in prison uh, and <laughs> like threw him back, back in lockup. And uh, St. Anthony was like, no, it, the kicking, the kicking uh, my head was a sign that the, 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 the demon's about to leave him or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like this co combination of like that, and that prophetic uh, knowing yeah. and seeing the healing and then. In the Smith Bogglesworth glory. Yeah. In reverse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was just this beautiful and, and, and a lot of, a lot of the healings that. He, that took place around him were like that. They were very effortless. They were very, very much reminded me of Paul's miracles, of Jesus' miracles, where mm -hmm. it was a it was a passive, it was a passive act. There wasn't this uh, f this yeah. you know. <laughs> it was it was like, um, you know, it if you if you turn around and go home, thanks for visiting me. If you turn around and go home. There was this other miracle where this girl was brought to him where she had just drain the stuff draining out of her ears that turned into worms and stuff. It was just weird. And um, he was like, you know, as soon as you, thanks for visiting me, as soon as you go on your way home, you know, you'll find that you're healed or whatever. And, and sure enough, she was. And it was just, it was just a lot of these things where it was Come just on. very... Is very he was very knowing that it wasn't him doing it and very knowing that it was uh going to be done and there was just this calm confidence you know that i really appreciate yes. uh, and that i really gleaned from it was just you know there's just a lot of glory on that <laughs> a lot of glory on that calm confidence when it comes to healing yeah it doesn't so. it seem like uh you know those that spend time just in solitude and contemplation really seem to exude that at some point. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that's definitely something we could drink from from anthony it was just he was chilling man with the lord yeah like yep. in that place like he knew how to dwell in that secret place of his heart which is why you know his renown became so great that we still talk about him to this day wow uh you know thousands of years later literally uh it's almost two thousand years 
later. Yeah. And, uh, and his impact is still being spoken of. And so though oftentimes when I read this stuff about, uh, St. Anthony, like we were reading Athanasius's biography of Anthony and Man, there's so much religious stuff in there. Actually, stuff you want to avoid, man. You don't. But at the same time, there's something to the fact that he valued the presence of God. Like he yeah. valued the glory to the point where he was willing to pull away for decades just to be with the Lord. And I think there's there is something there you don't want to just overlook. Um, man, we uh, we so easily like turn to the busyness of this world or another project or another like whatever it may be yeah and uh and this guy was just you know in wholehearted devotion now like it's funny because i was i was having trouble thinking of, of some of the stories and testimonies of anthony because so many of them were a little discouraging to me because it's always <laughs> there was a lot of demon fighting too absolutely which i think you you don't want to just pure just pure uh, some of it was just pure gnostic right storytelling and, yeah and and honestly like there's a lot of exaggeration that happens with these saints over the years too sometimes you read back you don't want to compare yourself to them that's why we're trying to just glean the nuggets there rather than use a lot of literal <laughs> comparisons because uh especially the early saints i mean the longer the time period that's happened the more opportunity there has been for exaggerations and i mean in anthony's life there were there was uh, numerous uh works of art on all the times where he would fight demons you know and all his temptations through the night where he struggled and in the end it's like they just come out kind of glorifying uh anthony's abilities to be super to devoted stand or, temptation and yeah, yeah yeah where it's like you know it, if 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 that's what you get out of it you, there's no glory to jesus there you know it's yeah. like his knuckles were whiter than any than any man yeah, who's ever man. lived you know his his knees were more callous <laughs> he was you know uh, his body was scarred for more demon bites than yeah any exactly man that ever exactly. lived it's like well congratulations dude uh, i guess there was one that was like really kind of a hybrid good. that sounded kind of cool though it was like he when he moved into the one temple <laughs> that was even further out in the desert it was just like filled with reptiles and I was like, oh, here we go. Another one of these stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. but then it was just like, he went in there and then they all like ran away, you know, like yeah, just like yeah, left yeah. so that he could live there. And I was like, oh, that'd be cool. You know, well, whereas, some past like, I'd be glad to have run away from me. In the well, glory. Francis would have made friends with the reptiles. And they just, yeah, that's true. They, they all would have formed a band. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you know, the, the, <laughs> I, I think, you know, something we've learned over the years too is like. Anthony represents this this passion within all of us when we first uh, truly begin to encounter Jesus and truly begin to encounter the glory of God. You want to abandon everything, dude, for the glory. Like, that's natural. You want to be utterly devoted. And that yeah. never leaves you. I mean, that's huge. And I think you kind of see that even as he's in the early church, that, that oftentimes happens in the early part of our true uh disciple of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's like you have this utter and complete abandon and that is so healthy guys. If that's where you're at right now, like just go for it, you know? Um, but over time you realize too, that it's, um, it's not by your efforts. It's not by your devotion. It's not, God doesn't need you to fight demons for him. Jesus was perfectly successful at the cross. You know, um, the effortlessness of this salvation is glorious. And I think true solitude over time, you know, and obviously Anthony had to understand a lot of this. Probably it didn't get written about because he didn't live in a time where it was acceptable to write about such things, I'm guessing. But, you know, any any time at length is solitude with, with the real Jesus Christ. And you come out uh, less uh, concerned about your abilities to do anything, less concerned about, you know, your exploits and your great discipline and you're just fully reliant on him you know you're fully reliant on like uh man i have nothing to add to this i'm included in this and i'm a beautiful participant but uh it has nothing to do with you know how much i'm gonna fast or pray how much i'm gonna fight demons through the night in fact i think <laughs> the sign of a more and more mature believer is that you see less and less darkness and you behold more and more light you know, your whole mm, body is filled yeah. with light and you're proclaiming heaven. You're not necessarily fighting hell, you know, because you realize Jesus already to, you know, John 12 says now is the judgment of this world. Now the prince of this world is cast out. And so 
I think a lot of times that uh, all that demon fighting that you know Anthony or a lot of us do in our early days, uh, as we see the magnitude of the work of Christ, becomes uh, less and less. Um, it's more of a thing that you you kind of it's a realm you think you're still in when you're you know more of a new uh, believer, but uh, you you know as you grow in Christ, you realize you just we're seated with Him, you know, and it's all about Him. It's all about Jesus, and so. Yeah. It's anyway. good. That's good. Um, one last quote that I love from Anthony <laughs> was uh this is something that's actually uh stuck with me for some years, but he would he had a, a thing where they asked him, Anthony, what should we do? you know, and one of the lines he said to them was, uh, do not be quick to leave your house. And I don't know, I that's always just been a drunk phrase for me, dude, like uh in the glory, in in, in community, in commitment. You know, there's something about, uh, he understood this settledness, this stability, and just this intoxication in that phrase. It kind of communicates to me where he says, do not be quick to leave your house. Mm. Um, yeah. Firstly, like you're, I think us mystics, you can live in such a way where your house is such a freaking like portal of glory, where your house is just a place filled with, you know, um, the culture of heaven. To the point yeah. where you just love being home, where you love, you know, um, man, you, the place where you dwell, you know, there's just something about it. And, mm. uh, but then also with that, like not having this busy mentality where you're just always like running here and there. And, um, you know, we kind of discussed that as well. Just the solitude of your heart, like living in the just true shalom peace, you know? Um, and then the lastly, I think when it has to do with community too, it's like, uh, you know, Anthony was like, you know, settled in his community, you know, he was, mm. he was there as a part of like, you know, he was a pillar of his community. And I think there's something to that, you know, as mystics and saints, like some of us, you know, young mystics are just so excited to go to wherever the glory hotspot is, you know, or to go to the next conference or go to the next thing, mm. uh, you know, and, uh, Anthony was a pillar, you know, because he knew the glory was in him and, and, uh, that there was a value to seeing it like kind of take root and break out in his local community by him just being in one place. I think there's a rootedness there, you know, that we could learn from mm. in this day. Yeah. That's really good. Another like thing it. that I was like really touched by in his life was he was approached by all like the smartest people of mm. the entire area. Yeah. Yeah, like all the philosophers, all the whatevers, because people were saying, "Oh, he's 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 the smartest person ever," or whatever. People were hearing rumors about that, and then some people came to basically just make fun of him because he couldn't read, and uh, and then he basically went on to to ask them a series of questions, and he kind of just stumped them, like he astounded them with his his wisdom, which again reminds me of Jesus, like yeah, he's kind of yeah, channeling yeah. that, you know, that those stories that you hear you know, that are in there, um, in the gospels of, you know, just being, uh, just the kind of astounding the Pharisees and things like that with, with, with his wisdom. Cause it was, it's like a, it's like a wisdom from heaven that can't be, it can't be, uh, argued against cause it's, it's just coming from a place of rest is the only, almost That's the good. way that I would put it. Cause it was like, you know, the same thing, like the wisdom of Solomon, you know, yes. I mean, it's the spirit of wisdom, it's Holy spirit, Yes. you know? So it's, it's like, these people would come to just try to make them out to be stupid and try to prove their own points and make themselves feel good. But then they would kind of go away questioning even their beliefs because they, they were kind of coming to make fun of them for being a Christian. And then they kind of left feeling like either, either they left completely believing in Jesus or they left questioning everything that they believed in, you know, and questioning their gods and all this other stuff because of the wisdom that was coming out of them. That's so it's good. A, I thought that was just a really fun read. There's there's some great little dialogues from him in there. Um which book in the Athanasius? Book? It was in the Athanasius. Yeah, yeah, it was in the Athanasius, but there was this one quote where he's like didn't didn't Jesus co uh, come to earth to um to uh to make um uh to basically, he's he was it was just a little gospel tidbit. He's like, then Jesus come, uh, become incarnate so that man man mankind could be given divinity and didn't you know uh you know mankind receive 
the the, the fullness of the Godhead in Christ to, uh, you know, <laughs> to. I don't know. It was just that whole thing of uh, the incarnation. It was just really good. I can't remember the exact quote. I love that part though. It was in that little section where he's like talking to the philosophers, but yeah, dude, the the wisdom that comes out of just uh, dwelling in the glory. You know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes we forget that there really is a mystic wisdom that just just by resting in in Him and uh, and yeah. in a life of contemplation of the heart. You know, yeah. a life of really uh, just putting that first. You know. Um, I think as we close here, something interesting, like with any of these episodes that we do about the different mystics and the different saints and stuff, is instead of comparing yourself or instead of asking what they did that we need to do to get what they got, um, any any member of the body of Christ is a part of you. And I think as we just kind of close, let's just, instead of like saying, what do we need to learn to get from that? We're actually drinking from uh, our connectedness to Anthony and connectedness to the different mystics and knowing that that's a part of us, like that's in you. Like that, uh, whatever virtue that you see in Anthony, whatever glory you see in Anthony, recognize it now in yeah. yourself, like as a part of you in Christ, uh, in through the body of Christ, we just uh, recognize that we have a passion for devotion that we have a yeah. passion for generosity and not greed, that we have a, uh, that solitude is a part of us, loving the presence and loving that uh, security that we have to just be alone with the Lord. And that's enough for us. That is a part of your life. That's a part of my life. I think, uh, I don't know, what else would we, would we recognize in him? You know, just, you know, miracle working power that he walked in, you know, uh, confidence that he walked in. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a part of us. And so as we, as we go throughout this week, let's just recognize the same glory that was in Anthony that drew him away to the desert is drawing us in, in different ways and di to experience the presence, the mystical presence. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah. that we can walk in that wisdom. We can walk in that healing glory we can walk as a true uh, mystic member of the body of Christ <laughs> jacked up. You are a mystic. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're the newest believer, if you've been a believer for a hundred years, Amen. you are connected to the vine drawn yeah. from the sap. Um, you're a desert mystic. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, whether you, you know, pioneer a new monastic community, like some of us are wanting to do, or you just live in the mystic life of your design. Oh, there's a phone call. I guess we're coming to the end of our episode here. Live in the life of your design and, uh, and know that you're connected with the mystic body of Christ throughout the ages. Hallelujah. Amen. It's Amen. good. It's good. Until next time, friends. See you later. Be blissed in the desert. <laughs> the desert spring of your heart. Hallelujah. Thanks for listening to the High on God podcast with Matthew Spinks and Zachary Paul Pratt. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and check out the accompanying YouTube vlog where we'll have short guided meditations on the glory of Jesus, as well as additional random coverage and updates from the God High. Also, if you believe in the message we're putting out to the world, consider donating or becoming a monthly partner at www.thefirehouseprojects.com slash donate so that we can spread the authentic, inebriating good news of Jesus. Alrighty then, until next time, stay high on the supply inside that never runs dry, Jesus Christ.